Yo, 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 it's the Xbox Goes Kaleidoscope. With some unique views and news to the YouTubers game on YouTube. Guess what, yo? Shit is really popping off now, as you damn well see, you know what I'm saying? And it has to do with the PS4's weaker CPU. You, 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 you already know what's actually back. This PS4 CPU is infinitely slower when compared to the Xbox One CPU. And once they finally think that they, everything is going fine, they get the rug pulled out from under them, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it goes to show that games that are open world tend to suffer greatly on the PS4. From Assassin's Creed Unity, alright, to The Witcher 3. You know, and once they think they have footing on stable ground and which it'll never happen again, Guess what? It does, you know what I'm saying? And something like Fallout 4 ends up dropping. And not only does the frame rate drop, but it drops down to single digit numbers. Not double digit, single digit numbers, all right? And this is supposedly a more powerful console? A console that has 50% more power? Well, what does that actually prove? It's 50% more bullshit and it ended up blowing up in your face, you know what I'm saying? For falling into the hype. Since the launch of the XB1, since the launch of this brand new console generation, the XB1 has been thrown out exclusive after exclusive after exclusive, yo. From Rise, the Son of Rome, all right? A game that was developed by Crytek. From Dead Rising 3, another open world game exclusively by Capcom, all right? And in this, now I know why Dead Rising 3 no never saw the PS4. It probably didn't have the juice under the hood in order to run it, okay? Because there's too many damn zombies on the screen. If anything, they would have had to take out, let's say out of 200 zombies, if I had to take out 195 and then leave the other five, all right? Because we all know how PS4's exclusives are. There's barely nobody on screen. You know, Infamous Second Son is a testament to that. Right? It's a testament. Oh, There's only five or six characters on screen at any given time. And then, of course, you also got exclusive games on the XB1 like Killer Instinct, right? Another game that runs at 60 frames per second. Titan Fall, an exclusive first person shooter and one of the best intellectual properties of this new console generation, right? That's already sold around 10 million copies. And then you also got Ori and the Blind Forest, which is an indie gem in and of itself, and also another indie gem, D4, Dark Dreams Don't Die, which is a psychedelic trip, all right? Along the lines of, let's say, Alan Wake, but Alan Wake is more deep, you know what I'm saying? And then also you got Forza Horizon 2, which is another game, which is an open world game for racing games, all right? Now we know that would never be done on the PS4, you know, you get things like Delay Club, all right? And then there was the Halo Master Chief collection. All right, now granted, it did have its pitfalls at launch, but since then, they've ironed out all the kings, you know what I'm saying? And then you've got brand new intellectual properties like Sunset Overdrive, another open world with a shitload of characters in the game, which was Somebody's actually going to run on the PS4 either. And then you got Rare Replay, Is of War Ultimate, Forza Motorsport 6, Halo 5 Guardians, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and that's just for this year, all right? Now, what's coming out next year? You still got Fable Legends, Killer Instinct Season 3, Quantum Break, D4, Crackdown 3, Scalebound, and Gears 4. Need I go on? And there's still a whole bunch of games we still don't know about. Either way, I just had to give my two cents worth and sign off saying, and there it is, there is motherfucking day, yo. Basically, hands down, the PS4 can't compete with the XB1, especially when it comes to open world games. Unless it's the last gen port like Grand Theft Auto, you know what I'm saying? Either way, I'm out.